Hello, hello, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. I am super happy that you're here. Today, I want to talk to you about values. Not necessarily value, but values. Last time, I talked about ethics and innovation, (laughs) and I did not check before I started because I got all excited, but I didn't check before I started about what ethics meant. And today I want to talk about, and if you listen to that episode, I did check it in the dictionary <laughs> in the middle, but yeah, I, I want to talk about values and specifically not like the worth of something as far as the monetary value or the significance of it in that way. But I want to talk about values as far as the sociology aspect, right? So I did look this up before in the dictionary before I started this episode. And the values, as far as sociology is, is concerned, are the ideals, customs, institutions, etc., of a society toward which the people of the group have an effective regard. These values may be positive as cleanliness, freedom, or education, or negative as cruelty, crime, or blasphemy. And interestingly, ethics comes up as one of the other possibilities, any object or quality desirable as a means or as an end in itself. So ethics and values are very much related, aren't they? Now, in thinking about this notion of values, what do we mean and how does it affect our work in the world as we live in it, right? If I'm talking a lot and I'm going to be talking a lot more about ethical innovation in the next I don't know how many years this podcast is going to go on, but it's going to keep happening. If I'm talking about doing the right thing as far as ethics are concerned, and I'm talking about innovation being when creativity meets a problem to solve, then ethical innovation is going to have to come from our values, what we as a society find important. And I'm going to keep talking about the vegan space because to me, that's that's my probably my biggest value is, is being as cruelty free as possible, leaving things better than I found them. And to me, that's what veganism really is, is leave it better than you found it. You know, take only photographs, leave only footprints and be kind, not just to the bipedal humans, but to everyone. So if we're talking about the vegan space, one of the things that I've seen happening is things like Italy banning fur farms, completely banning them. Many countries in Europe are banning them because why? Because we're realizing that it is unspeakably cruel to animals to do it, right? It's unspeakably cruel to, to raise an animal for that. I believe the same with animal testing. I don't think animals are being tested. I don't think testing on animals gives you enough data to be useful anyway, outside of the fact that it's cruel, right? Outside of the fact that putting a mask on a beagle and, and, and making that beagle inhale a certain chemical until the beagle dies is in any way a good thing. It's not a positive. It's not a net positive on this planet. Let's just call it what it is. It's just not. And it's still happening right? There are beagles, even as I say this, that, that are undergoing this torture. And here's the thing. It is not effective. What is harmful to a beagle may or may not be harmful to a human and vice versa. So what we need to be doing is finding ethical ways of conducting these tests that don't harm animals in part because let's not harm little adorable beagles or cats or bunnies or whatever, but in part because it's not, it's not effective. It's not an effective measure of whether or not whatever it is you're trying to test is actually going to work. It's not going to give you effective numbers. The standard deviation is too high. You just don't know. Witness, if you will, the coronavirus that is able to be just fine in non-bipedal human creatures, right? The deer population, from what I understand, is has all sorts of coronavirus, and they're just fine. They are just fine because it doesn't affect them the way it affects us. So why would we want to test anything, any kind of virus uh, cure or vaccine on critters when it's not going to give us a good indication of whether or not it works on humans? So, So here we go you know, we can look at values in that way, what is beneficial to us all, what is beneficial to society, but we can also look at it like it's the smart thing to do to come up with 
things that aren't cruel, right? In part, because let's not keep adding to the cruelty in the world, but partially because it's, it's, it's just better. It's more effective if we find ways that are going to be closer to humans to figure that out. And I don't mean chimps and I don't mean monkeys or primates of any kind. I don't mean that. I mean, we need to be looking at alternative ways, AI maybe, uh, to, to test some of this stuff, right? Because our perspective as a world is changing. Many countries banning factory farms. Many, many countries are banning testing on animals for, I mean, they're not, they're not banning factory farms. Sorry. They're banning fur farms. Uh, countries are banning cosmetic testing on animals. The perspective, the way we want to live is changing, right? Here in the USA, it's happening much more slowly, but it is happening. Vegan restaurants are popping up. Why? Because more people are realizing, first of all, it's healthy. It's a healthy lifestyle. You don't need meat to survive and thrive, but also we can look at the perspective of the animals and go, wow, this this value is important. Whether or not I'm, I'm participating in a practice that routinely traumatizes and destroys and kills all of these beings, uh, maybe that's not my values. Maybe that's not what I want to do. So how do we, how do we combat it? We find other ways. We find there are, there are companies right now that are, that are developing one at least has, and I don't remember the name, unfortunately. I'll see if I can find it. They're developing artificial intelligence ways, AI ways to do the same kind of testing and make it incredible. That's crucial, right? It's crucial for us as people, as a society, as a culture, and as a planet. That's what we can be doing. That's how we can be doing it. So think about that. And, uh, and I'm not trying to be preachy, by the way. I'm working some of this stuff out as I talk to you about it because I want to live my values. And I think we all do. We all have a certain set of standards about how we want to live in this world. And that's a big part of it, right? Isn't it? What, what value system do you hold to and how much is it predicated on not causing trauma to other beings? Something to think about. All righty. Uh, yeah. Wow. What an episode. I hope that you've enjoyed it, or at least I hope that it's given you something to think about. Until next time, this is Isolde Trachtenberg for the Innovative Mindset Podcast, reminding you that ethical innovation is trying to solve problems creatively because you want to do the right thing.